This video is brought to you by Warby Parker. All proceeds will be going to charity. Back when I was a kid, I used to watch a cartoon called Static Shock, a show that was a personal favorite of mine and part of my Saturday morning cartoon lineup. Huh, I guess Saturday morning cartoons are kind of a thing of the past now, aren't they? Man, I'm getting old, aren't I? But yeah, I genuinely enjoyed Static Shock. It felt fresh and new to me. It made my kid brain go, oh, there are more heroes than just Batman and Superman. Cool. Little did kid me realize, though, that Static Shock would end up being one of the most progressive cartoons to ever air on television. A fact that I was reacquainted with as an adult only a few weeks ago, as I recently rewatched some episodes. This show had stories that were about mental illness, gang violence, homelessness, and even racism. Now, that was an episode that Kid Me remembers. The one where you have Static's best friend, Richie, whose father is a racist. And when Static comes to visit for dinner, the father is just completely hostile to Virgil. Like, they don't hold their punches. Keep your voice down. It's bad enough I gotta deal with them all day long. Now one of them's in my house. Bruh. But out of all of the episodes, the one that sticks with me the most is called Jimmy, an episode that is about bullying and school shootings. Not an easy topic to discuss, especially for a Saturday morning cartoon show. To be honest, it's very surprising that this subject was even covered to begin with. But Static Shock never shied away from difficult and uncomfortable social issues. Instead, the writers saw an opportunity to help educate and discuss real issues with real kids who might run into these problems. And I absolutely respect that. Now, I'll be real with you all. I was quite apprehensive about making this video, especially in light of recent events that took place prior to the recording of this upload. That being said, here's the unfortunate reality of the situation. This problem is not getting better, it is getting worse. And I think that this episode of Static Shock does an excellent job of demonstrating the different people and the roles that they might play during these unfortunate situations. The bullies, the victims, the parents, the teachers, the bystanders, the friends. All of that is in this episode. So I'm going to try and do my best to respect the serious nature of this topic, share my thoughts about what I think is one of the most interesting episodes of Static Shock. So, what are the origins of Static Shock? By the way, I want to do a full series review for Static in the future, so I'm going to keep this short for now. Well, to no one's surprise, Static Shock started as a comic from DC Comics and first made its appearance in 1993. The comic itself was created by Dwayne McDuffie, Denise Cohen, Michael Davis, and Derek T. Dingle. Dwayne and Cowan would actually go on to work as showrunners on the cartoon adaptation that was released in 2000. The series ran for four seasons, with around 52 half-hour episodes in total, and a lot of episodes that include crossovers from heroes in the DC Universe. I guess the expanded universe before the expanded universe. They were doing it before it was cool. Static Shock, aka Virgil Hawkins, is a 14-year-old teen who lives in the city of Dakota. He lives with his widowed father and his older sister. He gained his powers due to an accident called the Big Bang, where a bunch of chemicals were released during a gang and police confrontation that Virgil was swept up in against his will. Due to the chemicals, Virgil gained the power of electricity and magnetism and is now the hero called Static Shock. He tries to stop the villains who also gain powers during the Big Bang, while also trying to live his life as a teenager, and all the headaches and hardships that come along with that. All in all, a good setup, and one that takes a solid approach to an urban setting with black characters. We don't get that often in comics, or in cartoon adaptations, so it was refreshing to see it done in a constructive and compelling way. So, let's recap the episode. By the way, the episode itself was written by Dwayne and Alan Burnett. It starts off with Richie being wheeled into an ambulance, and Virgil by his side. There's an air of mystery that something bad went down. After the intro theme, we see Virgil at a psychologist appointment, as he's sharing his thoughts and his role in the accident. Through flashbacks, we're introduced to Jimmy, an awkward and quiet student at Virgil's school. Virgil and Richie watch as Jimmy is bullied. The bullies taunt Jimmy, they mess with his laptop, they break his mouse. It's just relentless and none of the adults do anything to intervene. Virgil and Richie watch from an uncomfortable, frustrated distance as Jimmy is bullied, 
and that the teacher doesn't do anything about it. So, do they tell the adults? Do they try to stop the bullies? Eh, not really. They're not quite sure what to do. And that is a legit situation that many bystanders find themselves in. Richie and Virgil try to hang out with Jimmy, though it's awkward. Jimmy's mom even says, try not to scare these kids away, which makes it abundantly clear that Jimmy has a hard time communicating with people and making friends. It also reinforces that he's a loner. During the hangout, Jimmy tells Virgil and Richie about his father's gun, and Virgil, whose mother was killed by a gun, storms out of the house. We cut from the flashback to the psychologist, and Virgil tells her that he feels like a chicken for running away. But the psychologist tells him that it was okay to leave, that it was a wise choice since there was a gun. We then return to the flashbacks and see Jimmy make some progress while he socializes with other classmates. He helps to build a set for a Halloween party at the community center, and even starts to crush on this girl who's being nice to him. Eventually, the bully shows up and throws Jimmy into a locker. Jimmy is devastated and is begging to be set free. And when Virgil finds him and lets him out of the locker, Jimmy runs away and misses the party and then disappears for a few days. Virgil and his dad are actually on the way to help clean up the party and decide to drive by Jimmy to check in on him. While there, Virgil discovers Jimmy's battle journal on his laptop in his room and that his father's gun was missing. Virgil, his father, and Jimmy's father jump into action and call the police and head to the community center. We then cut to that location and see Jimmy confronting the bully and point the gun right at him. Jimmy is visibly disturbed, crying, shaking, angry, as the bully is telling Jimmy to relax while Richie is there trying to talk Jimmy down. Jimmy tells the bully that he should have backed off, that he should have left him alone. Fortunately, Richie was able to talk Jimmy out of it. But then the other two bullies rush Jimmy, and he accidentally discharges the gun, which hits Richie in the leg. At the end, Virgil wraps up his appointment with a psychologist, saying that he is frustrated with Jimmy shooting Richie, that he was frustrated with Jimmy getting bullied at all to begin with, and that he's angry at himself for not telling any of the adults about the gun. All in all, very valid emotions for a very difficult situation, and one that can be very real. Jimmy himself gets suspended, juvie, and counseling, while the bullies are also suspended too. We then see Richie and Virgil the next day at school, and they see a kid getting bullied by other guys, and they step in to help this guy who's being picked on. A reminder that noticing the right signs, red flags, and acting on it could help to prevent this problem in the future. We also get a fourth wall-breaking PSA from Static, which I feel is a very appropriate way to end this episode. So, what are my overall thoughts about the episode? Typically, when it comes to my episode reviews, I dive into multiple facets like the animation and voice acting, but I'm going to keep it mainly focused on the story this time around, since that is the focal point of this entire upload. Just know that I do like the designs of these characters, and just the overall energy and style of DC superhero cartoons from the 2000s. Yeah, the animation can get a bit wonky at times, and the action can chug a bit, but that's all forgivable to me. Okay, the story. I absolutely love how the episode was told through flashbacks, via Virgil at his psychologist appointment. We get a glimpse at the start that something bad happened, and that Richie was injured, and now we get to see how these events were set up and then unfolded. We also get a sense of Virgil's frustrations, and how he felt powerless, which, to me, speaks volume of the severity of the situation, since Virgil has literal superpowers. Hey, even he can be a victim too. I also greatly appreciate that the writers did not go the path of static swooping in and saving the day. That would have completely undermined the entire point of the episode. Virgil was more of a student and a teenager rather than a superhero, and that makes the story that much more powerful to me and maintains a respectable level of seriousness to this topic. Another thing that this episode did well was demonstrating how bullies can just gnaw away at a victim and how teachers and adults can be completely ignorant to it, and how that puts bystanders in an awkward position. Virgil and Richie, from what I can tell, did not really mesh with Jimmy as friends, but were trying to do their part to at least give him a positive outlet, that he wasn't alone. The moment where Jimmy shows the gun and Virgil storms out spoke to me and felt very real. Virgil has his own personal reasons for hating guns, and his reaction was completely warranted. Again. He's trying to help Jimmy, 
But that is a lot of responsibility for a teenager who already has a lot on his plate. Hell, I'm an adult, and I'd be completely stressed out in that situation. And you can absolutely see how uncomfortable and stressful the situation was for Virgil and Richie. But the main thing that sticks with me is how Jimmy is a tormented individual. He wasn't presented as a perfect character. As a matter of fact, he was an outcast. He was awkward. He had a hard time making friends and communicating. And it honestly makes sense why the bullies would target him with their harassment. The bullies were cruel and relentless, and Jimmy obviously hated everything about them. He wanted them to stop, and to him, he had no other options, and that threatening them with a gun would get his point across. Again, this hits close to home, because it happens in real life. Bullies who go unchecked with their harassment. Adults who don't notice or don't care. Bystanders who don't know what to do. Parents who don't pay attention to their kids or notice that the gun is missing. Unstable victims who feel isolated and think that there's no other way out and decide to take drastic, uncalled-for action. This episode truly resonates with me because it tells it like it is and effectively demonstrates the various roles and moving parts of this horrific scenario. The writers chose not to sugarcoat the severity of this social issue. And in doing so, they get their message across in a very unforgettable way that will hopefully provide effective advice to those who might find themselves in this uncomfortable and potentially terrifying situation. You can do something to help stop this. If someone tries to show you a gun, don't stick around. Get away from them. Tell an adult or someone you trust. Do your part to increase the peace out there, all right? So, in conclusion... I praise Static Shock for being a cartoon that was able to effectively discuss a very difficult subject matter for both kids and adults. That is not an easy thing to do by any means. You risk scaring away your audience and also advertisers. But Static Shock took up that mantle of responsibility and utilized its characters and setting in a way that was relatable to the real world. The superhero stuff is fun and exciting but it does not lose sight of tackling stories that are uncomfortably familiar to us viewers. I mean, most PSAs are very cumbersome with their message, and if anything, make their viewers run in the opposite direction. <laughs> Remember Cartoon All-Stars to the Rescue? That anti-drug PSA? Yeah, I I'm quite certain that zero children were persuaded by these Smurfs and Muppet Babies to not try weed. If anything, it probably made them want to try it that much more. But for this episode, the message is undeniably clear, and it does not hold back in any way. And that, in my opinion, is for the best. Don't sugarcoat it. Tell it like it is, because that will stick with your viewers. So yeah, I guess it's safe to say that this video is quite the change of pace from my Furry Force review, right? Now, I do have plans to revisit Static Shock in the future and give the entire series a proper review. I mean, who knows? Maybe it might even get a reboot down the road. Right, HBO Max? Are you listening? Give this show a reboot. That or put him in Justice League. That would be cool. So a big shout out to this video's sponsor, Warby Parker. Look at my face. Closer. Closer. A bit closer. Do y'all like my glasses? Then you should see my glasses in real life. To all the folks who wear glasses, I think we all know the struggle when it comes to finding that perfect pair. Going out in person, awkwardly looking in the mirror, and squinting your eyes, and just, just wanting to go home, right? If only there was an easier way to shop and try on glasses. Oh snap, it's Warby Parker. Warby Parker is truly committed to providing exceptional vision care online and in stores, offering eyeglasses, sunglasses, eye exams, and contact lenses. Hell, they even have glasses starting at $95, which also includes prescription lenses. They also offer sunglasses progressives and blue light lenses too. The entire process of picking out my glasses was genuinely awesome and incredibly easy. Warby has this program called the Home Try-On and it's a way for you to select five frames to test out for five days, and they ship you the lenses to try on for free. They even have this quiz to help you find an ideal pick. The size of the frames, the width of your head. If it's anything like mine, it's, it's gonna be big. Uh, the, the, the colors you prefer, 
Questions like that to help you narrow down your search. The quiz is very personalized, and I like how it helps you to discover the top picks you want to sample. Do I want squared frames like my avatar? Or maybe something a bit more round? Do I want my frames to be thick? Or maybe thin? Or maybe sunglasses? I actually have a pair of sunglasses from Warby, and I wear them all the time. After trying on the frames and making my selection, I backed up the sample frames and mailed them right back to Warby. Oh, by the way, they cover for shipping, and it's very easy to do. Also, don't let your FSA or HSA dollars go to waste. Put them to good use on Warby Parker prescription glasses, prescription sunglasses, contact lenses, and eye exams. Honestly, guys, this home try-on program is incredibly awesome. And this is the way I do my glasses shopping for now on. It is so convenient, and I appreciate how it provides a personalized quiz, a broad selection of glasses, and ease of access for me to find that perfect pair of spectacles. So go hit up warbyparker.com slash saberspark to sample five pairs of glasses at home for free. You get five days to try them out, see what you like and what stands out to you, but no obligation at all to buy anything. And like I said before, shipping is free and prepaid for, so no worries about that. So go check out Warby Parker today. I genuinely love Warby Parker and their home try-on program, and I highly recommend them.